So just like Microsoft Word and any other program, really, when we want to make a change to a specific piece of a document, we need to select it first. In that last video, we talked about making the snow a little cleaner but not blown out, opening up the shadows but not darkening them too much, not affecting the entire picture. We want to do just that part. So like the other programs, we need to select the area first. Now over here on the left hand side, we have our selection tools. We have the marquee, we have the lasso, we have the magic wand. Up at the very top is actually the move tool. The move tool is, well, it's the move tool. The hotkey for that is the letter V because V stands for move, right? Ugh, don't get me started. Anyway, the marquee tool though actually does start with M. And when you click and hold on these things, you'll see that um, you'll get the quick key on the far right hand side, the letter M there. Uh, also, if you have like in the bottom right of these little squares, there's a little triangle there. That means there's another, another tool underneath it and you can change them by clicking and holding upon the tool icon. Okay, underneath the marquee, we have the lasso. The lasso, lasso is a handy tool. It has three variations. Then we have the magic wand, which is an amazing tool. Uh, underneath the magic wand is the quick selection tool, which is also amazing. Now, so to get started though, let's just assume that in this picture of our sun cups here, we want to select the sky. Let's just say we want to select the sky. And the reason for that is that we'll invert it so that we can select the mountains. More on that in a bit. But we want to make a selection along the lines of this mountain ridge and close full circle around the top. So we have the marquee tool here. Marquee makes a rectangle or it makes uh, an ellipses. Yeah, neither one of those are gonna be particularly useful for this image, which actually has, you know, a fairly ragged setup here. So the marquees we can rule out pretty much immediately. Some, sometimes they're good for things, this isn't one of them. Below the marquee though in our tool set is the lasso tool. Now the lasso has three variations. It has the regular lasso, the polygon, and the magnetic. The regular lasso is basically a freeform drawing tool where you can quickly move around things and just kind of circle them, lasso them, if you will, hence the name. The quick key again is the letter L. So the lasso is great. Um, you have to close the circle when you're done. So when we say make a circle here, I could stop it right here in the middle and it will close itself. But if what I wanted was a circle, I need to close it specifically. Now that's an important detail because in the next version, the polygon lasso tool, you need to seriously return to your starting point in order to make the st selection stick. So as you might be able to hear, as I click along the way here with the polygon lasso tool, I can click and anchor it, so to speak. I, I can just kind of keep on going around here on the ridge line, and every time I click, it connects the selection piece to, well, wherever I clicked. Now this is much more handy for something like this ridge line because I can make a much better selection along the way. Now, as I go, say if I just want to speed up for the sake of this lecture, I'm gonna come on up here to the sky, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna come back to my starting point. Look at my mouse, when I get close, it fo I get a little circle next to it. When I close my circle, I get a circle. Well, ha, huh, funny how that works. When I close my selection to the end point, I get a little circle indicating I have made a full selection here. Now that's actually really important to notice because had I not done that and just kind of like stopped, well, you can't stop, that's the thing. Now I'll tell you, well, I'll tell you now, the polygon and magnetic lasso tools are your best friends, they're amazing until they're not. And you will experience that, I can guarantee you. I've never had a student not love the magnetic lasso tool and then hate it. So 
That said, close the circle, always. Now the magnetic lasso tool is a little bit different in that it will read the difference in values between one tone and another. In other words, if you think back to that histogram in levels, the darker areas have lower number values. The magnetic lasso will read where those value differences are and attach itself to that border. If you blow up the screen a little bit, you might be able to see the little white part of the selection thing. It wiggles around a little bit and you can see it attach itself to where the difference is between the black and the blue. So that's really kind of cool. It's also, again, really tedious. If I come, come on up here, you can see I'm just going to move it, and you can see it attaches itself to where we have some changes in value up in the sky. This is actually kind of a low-quality photograph here. Um, and just like the polygon lasso tool, it will attach itself to, well, it'll keep going until you close the circle. Closing the circle becomes essential because you can't get out of it. You, that's what, that's where, when the magnetic lasso will betray you. It'll be for your best friend and then you'll hate it because it, you can get stuck in it. And I'll, I'll tell you now, to get out of your magnetic lasso tool, hit command period. That will escape it. Um, but yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, you'll learn. Anyway, you have to close the circle. So once you have the lasso tool or your selection made, then you can, well, you can add to your selection. Now we haven't, I don't think this is part of the lecture notes, but you, I only did a little bit of the sky here. And the truth is I've got a lot more. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and you'll notice on my mouse, when I hold down the shift key, I get a little plus symbol there. Holding down the shift key means I'm going to add to my selection. Now I changed my tools here too, just for the sake of illustration. Holding down the shift key adds to my selection. And let me go back to our lasso here. And by holding down the shift key, I can move a little more quickly. So that's kind of cool, huh? Now here's the deal. This is really time consuming and uh, oh my gosh, it's such a pain. So other bits about selecting the sky, and here's why some of these details become important. It's going to be a huge time suck to try to outline the mountains here. So instead, the smarter tool to use is going to be the magic wand. Now the magic wand, here, watch this. This is kind of fun. I can click once, hold down my shift key, click twice, click a third time. Three clicks, I have almost the entire sky selected. That's because the magic wand selects similar values within a tolerance of a certain number of values. So what that means is that in that histogram, we had zero and 256. Well, the magic wand clicks on one of the values between there. Let's just say a hundred. Say, let's just say like this black dot right here in the middle of the sky is a hundred. With a tolerance of 32, that means it's going to select everything from 16 values darker than 100 and 16 values brighter than 100. So because of knowing how the magic wand works, I've been able to boom, 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 get a lot more done quickly. Saving time, saving effort, saving brain cells, because this is really mind-numbing stuff. Um, and it's all about knowing how the tool works. I'm going to delete the sky for a second. Actually, I'll just make it, I guess I'll make it, I'll make it white. Why not? And it's still not a perfect selection, but it's not bad. So it's all about time. The magic wand selects similar values within a range. The lasso is just kind of a free drawing tool, and the marquee is a circle or a square. There are times when it comes in handy, just a lot of times where it doesn't. Those selection tools are really kind of key to doing a lot of stuff. So remember them. 
when it comes to a quiz or something like that, I will probably ask you something like, how does the magic wand work? And it's important that you know. And again, in looking at this picture, it was really all about knowing how to use the tool to make your needs happen, as opposed to knowing, hey, I can do this. You have to have that idea first and then use the right tool to make that choice. Okay, enough for now. Let's move on.